great for change and that the Lord brought him back safe and sound. Hallelujah. So I praise the Lord for that. Um, we just can't take things for granted anymore. Uh, like for real. Amen. So I thank God that our pastor is back safe and sound. Hallelujah. So, uh, <laughs> um, so I'm not going to be before you guys long. Um, we just praise the Lord. I, I do believe this is a, an encouraging word for for all of us. And it's, I'm just going to share. We'll be sharing. There'll be scriptures and all and stories. And then you're just going to, like I said, the Lord just have his way. But um, I want to start out and just, uh, just pray and just ask the Lord to come in. He's already here. But Father, I just thank you. I acknowledge you. I acknowledge you in all of my ways, Lord, as we get ready to come together um, to go live, Lord. I thank you, Father, for what will take place on this evening, the word that you've given me. Um, I thank you, Lord, that uh, it is a word that is in due season, that it's, um, it's a word that would edify your sons and daughters uh, that are here and those that are watching. And so I just thank you, Father. Uh, I just ask that I would decrease and allow you and your word and your truths of your word to increase and increase in our hearts, Lord, um, that it not fall on, uh, on on shallow ground or hard ground, but that we be receptive, that give us an ear to hear and a heart to receive whatever it is that you want to speak. And I just thank you, Lord, and we give you the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I was praying earlier in, um, in scripture, like David said, I was glad when they said to come to the house of the Lord. Amen. And we have to be glad to be able to come into the house of the Lord. Yes. It's not the message, but, you know, we are the above ground church. We don't have to be underground. On, we are above ground. Yes. We need to thank God for Amen. that. But we don't have to hide and, and do this in secret. So let's just give God a hallelujah praise. Amen. Amen. For real. So um, actually my message tonight, the title of it is uh, Jesus Really Gets Us. Jesus Really Gets Us. And we're going to be coming from uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 2. We're going to uh, go Hebrews chapter 2, focusing on verse 18. Um, but I'll be reading uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 through 18, and then Hebrews chapter 4, uh, focusing on verses 14 through 15. Um, Matt, Pastor Matt, can you do me a favor? And uh, that little bag with the little red pom poms, can you make sure everything's yeah, done? Oh, you, oh praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. We have a little bit. I'll, we'll get to that at the end of our message, but just want to make sure everyone has one. So I'm going to read Hebrews chapter 2, uh, beginning of verse 14. And it says, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For, verse 16, for indeed he does not give aid to angels, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. We are the seed of Abraham. Amen. Verse 17, therefore in all things he has to be made like his, like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. Verse 18, and this is one of our focus verses, but this is the focus verse. For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. And I'm going to go to Hebrews chapter 4 and read verses 14 and 15. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Verse 15, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. 
but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, um, let me just, we're just, like I said, I'm just going to share. So, where this all kind of came from, how the Lord worked this out. Um, so, last week, uh, last Sunday, well, some of you may or may not know, I love to cook. I really, it, our household, it is, food is an event in our household. I'll just put it like that. It is an event in our household. Um, sometimes it's, a, it's the WWE, other times can be, you know, the Food Network or whatever. But it is definitely an event. So, and I do take, you know, what I do in the kitchen very seriously. Right. Once I made my husband watch a movie recently, um, and he said he kind of understands now. Uh, there was a line in the movie that said how, I guess, chefs, they treat the, they treat the kitchen, no, uh, what was it? Um, the kitchen isn't treated like a democracy, it's treated like a dictatorship. Oh. And that is true. It is kind of true because, you know, the kitchen, it's a very, I mean, every, everything, the food is going, cooking all, you can't have everybody in and out and all of that. Right. And that's just one of my pet peeves. So last Sunday, I was making dinner, um, you know, it was almost done. I was getting ready to plate, and I told Rachel, to go, you know, tell your dad for me. Without fail, it's always, always before dinner. The devil is a liar. But at any rate, you know, a little snide comment, you know, I thought, I thought she said dinner was going to be ready over that, um, you know, to go eat. And it just, you know, kind of just hurt me, right? So I'm like, okay, and I'm still, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to keep this moving. And Honey Bunny makes another snide comment. So I went from zero to five and then from five to 10. And it just was all over, whatever. So long story short, like, you know, after all the hula hoo, <laughs> I'm like, we need to repent. Not I, but we yeah. need to repent. Yeah. Um, and so we did. I mean, like, you know, because we just, it just, whatever. That's good. So, you know, he prayed and everything it was really good. Um, so then the next day, when I was having my morning devotional, I was like, Lord, what are we going to do today? Like, what are we going to read? And so this devotional, Come Away, My Beloved, is one of my favorites. And this book, really, it, without fail, every time when I open it, it's, it's speaking, it's very personal. And it just shows you how the Word of God is just so alive. It's very, very personal. Amen. And so I opened it up this past Monday, and the title of it, I'm going to read this because it's all going to tie in. It's, the title of it is The Art of Committal. And it says, Oh my child, lay your heart in my hand and let me heal it. Yea, let me gather up thy tears, for they are precious to me. It's referring to Psalm 56, 8. You have not been suffering alone, but I myself have been near thee all along the way. My heart has felt all that you have felt. And that, that got me right there. You do not have a high priest who is not able to sympathize with your sufferings, but one who experienced every grief and human emotion, every human emotion common to man. And yet in the midst of these experiences of suffering, he did not sin. Therefore, he is one who is able to suffer thee, or aid, or assist thee. And that's based on Hebrews 2, 18, which I just read. He is one who, having walked the same path himself, is able to teach thee how that in the midst of these human experiences, listen to this, of hurts and frustrations, that was speaking to me loud and clear right there. Uh, and loneliness and heartache, you may rise above, listen to this, the natural tendencies to fall into the sins of self-pity, self-reproach, depression of spirit, resentment, and the like. And I wrote here, you know, it's just the complete opposite of the fruit of spirit. Um, and actually, I want, to, I want us to go there before I continue reading in Galatians. Um, well, 
Yeah, uh, let's just go there real quick. Um, because when I was reading that, I'm like, you know, it's fruit of the spirit isn't exactly, it's not optional, but we sometimes act like it is. And, you know, in the sense of we forget that we are, I mean, it comes with us being born again, having peace, love, joy, you know, showing gentleness, kindness. Um, I'm actually going to read. Yeah, Galatians 5. I want to begin in 15. I think I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to start in verse uh, verse 14 and 15 in Galatians, and I'll jump to the fruit of the Spirit. But it says, and this is Galatians 5, 14, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, Beware, lest you be consumed by one another. And in the uh, in the Living Translation, I mean the Living Bible, it says, "But if instead of showing love among yourselves, you are always critical and catty, watch out. Beware of ruining each other." Verse sixteen. I advise you to obey only the Holy Spirit's instructions. He will tell you where to go and what to do, and then you won't always be doing the wrong things your evil nature wants you to. All righty, thanks. Um, Passion translation. But if you continue to criticize and come against each other, listen to this, over minor issues. Wow. Uh, This is totally, you know, this is me. Over minor issues, you're acting like wild beasts trying to destroy one another. And so, you know, when I was reading this, I'm like, all of this was just, yeah, it's pretty, pretty raw. Yeah. You know, the word of God, it's, it's raw. It is really sharp, and it's a lot, and it's powerful. And it's not, the word of God is not for us to read it. It's, it's us, it's the word of God reading us. Right. And so, you know, like I was saying with me and, and my husband, you know, that, just that little diatribe, and it's, a, it's something that happens that has happened before. Yes. You know. Um, numerous times um, that I can't even account, but it's those minor issues, those little things. But I love that what it says here, and we're just gonna, we're just gonna, what you call it? Um, we're just gonna blow here, where it says, "You do not have a high priest who is not able to sympathize with your sufferings, but who experienced every grief and human emotion common to man. Anger is a human emotion. Annoyance is a human emo- emotion." Just like love, just like, you know, uh, what I, I mean, the fruits of the spirit. But it's a human emotion, you know? Um, and he's, he's had that. He's been there. Um, That's good. And what it says here about how he is one who, having walked the same path himself, is able to teach, he's able to teach us how that in the midst of these human experiences, that's exactly what it is. Human experience of hurts and frustrations and loneliness and heartache, you may rise above the natural tendencies to fall into the sins of self pity, self reproach, etc. Okay, this is what I like. It, it continues here. It is not easy. It's not, and it's not. Um, not only is it not easy, but in the natural, in the flesh, it is impossible. But the same grace, which I promised to the Apostle Paul, to help him bear his affliction, the same grace I will give to you. His grace is sufficient. His strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. And all those little idiosyncrasies, you know. Um, You may bring the whole of your burden to me. I will help you as the days go by. And as the trials come and go, and as the learning process continues, I will teach you the spiritual secrets of the art of committal. And I'm just gonna pause right there because that word committal, I was thinking, okay, this is our commitment, you know, to the Lord. And I said, let me look this up, because I like looking up words. Yes. I really I like words. Yes. And I looked it up and I'm like, what does it talk about burial? I'm like, yeah. and, and committing someone or bring someone right. or what is it, someone to the institution and talk about, you know, burn like a, a servant. Yes. Funeral, yeah. Right. I'm like, that's not what I was thinking this was. But then I thought, I'm like, we are to die to ourselves. Amen. To the flesh, you know? So when we die to ourselves, all those little microaggressions, 
won't mean a whole lot as much. Um, and then just going back, and I'm totally like, I want the Lord, I, I'll just, you know, we're just gonna let the Lord be, but um, in that, uh, in Hebrews here, in Hebrews uh, 2, what is important? Bear with me, y'all. All right. Okay. Uh, in Hebrews 2, verse, Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. Verse 2, for if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? And when I read that, it just brings me to judgment begins with us. So it matters with how we're reacting. It matters in what we're doing. It, you know, it matters to God. It, it, it matters because it begins with us. Everything begins with us. So when I was reading that, I was like, you know, this committal, um, you know, he'll teach us the spiritual secrets of dying to self. That's right. And, and, it's, and it's hard. Like I said, it's not easy. Um, and it's not meant for us to do this on our own, obviously. Obviously. Right. Um, so... You know, when I think about like just with my son, and I'm, this is all me. This is like not has nothing to do with my husband, but this is it's we all have to work our, our salvation out. Yes, it's personal. Yes. So what he does doesn't really it doesn't matter. It's what I'm doing that counts. It's how I'm reacting, and even so, you know, um, as much as what how that affects and how that you know what Rachel sees and everything else. So um, again, judgment begins with us. So, uh, but it's okay, not that it's okay, but it's okay in that Jesus really gets us because he's been there, done that, because he's dealt with those frustrations and those idiosyncrasies. I mean, he, you know, his disciples and everything, he saw them for who they were, and I'm sure they were getting on his nerves at times. How many times did he say, you know, have I been, you know, so long with you that you don't know what I'm, you know, what I'm about? So he knows, he sees that, he gets it. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that he hasn't, you know, he doesn't throw out the baby with the bathwater, so to speak. Um, you know, he comes to our aid. He is our helper. He is our high priest. He comes to our aid. Uh, and, and sometimes he will also send uh, spirit messengers. Uh, and one of, this is also in Hebrews as well. I don't know if I read it, but he, it, you know, he sends his spirit messengers um, to come, and he may send somebody that will speak a word, and, be like, and that's what happened with us. You know, whether it was you know Brother Mark or Pastor Deb, um, Pastor Matt. I'm like, okay, but he will send he will send people to kind of just like to you know, because God loves us, and who the Lord loves. Chases. That's just how it is. So um, Jesus comes to our aid. He sends his spirit messengers. Yes. And one thing we also have to understand with this, um, like when we're going through all these different emotions and experiences or what have you, we can't ignore the truth of God. We can't ignore it. always goes back to God's word. And everything that was written, it says in Hebrews, I don't, um, and here in Hebrews as well, uh, you know, all the stuff with the children of Israel, all of that, and Egypt and all that, it wasn't written for their benefit, it was written for our benefit. So we can't ignore that. And we have a great high priest that has been touched with the feelings of our infirmities. We can't ignore that truth, that we do have somebody that we can go to, to when we're getting in that, that zone, that frustrated zone or whatever zone, that anger zone, whatever it is, that sad zone, that low, that whatever it is that we can go to him and we can receive from him. Um, no, it's not easy, but by God's grace, because again, his grace is sufficient for us, and we have to believe that. Amen. It's not just, you know, all these little nice little words, and it sounds great, but we really, especially as we see the days are even, I mean, we really have to grab a hold of the truth of God's word. 
humility to now more than ever. Um, and like I said, you know, the fruit of the Spirit, it's not optional. Um, I'm just going to read there. I'm going to go back to Galatians. And we're almost done, actually. But uh, in Galatians 5, beginning at verse, well, I'm going to start at verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, uh, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And it's very, that's, and it's a very big thing. Um, but verse 22, but, like God's conditions, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. So that the fruit of the Spirit is what, I mean, again, not that it, it's not optional. We have it in us. We just have to tap into it. Right. We really do. We have to tap into it more and just pause. Um, and then, too, before, because I, I want to finish reading this, but um, I was also thinking, me and my daughter, we watched Grey's Anatomy. Um, and they, it was an episode that we watched uh, the other night. And they usually have like a, in the beginning, they have like a, what do you call it, so where she'll, you know, have some quote, like not a quote, but they'll expound and stuff like they're, you know, talking, whatever, and real proverb, if you will. And it was, in the episode, it was a lot of tragedy that was going on. And it was contrasting, well, I'll just read what it says here. It says, these are the things we beg for, a root canal, an IRS audit, Coffee spilled on our clothes. When the, re when the really terrible things happen, we start begging the God we don't believe in to bring back the little horrors and take away this. It seems quaint now, doesn't it? The flood in the kitchen, the poison oak, the fight that leaves you shaking with rage. Would it have helped if we could see what else was coming? Would we have known that those were the best moments of our lives? And when I heard that, I'm like, is it really that serious that, you know, I, I'm, you know, my husband is making a snide comment or, you know, right, the kids right, are right. rushing me to go or whatever. Is it really that serious? Because in the grand scheme of life, God forbid something goes down, something happens. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be reflecting on those moments and cherishing those because that's nothing. Right. And even the things that we see going on today. Lord, help us to stop getting caught up in the microaggressions and the microcosm of so just good. nonsense. Yes. And to really take stock of what, you know, we have a great high priest. He gets us. He really does get us. And he understands. But we have to really just, again, grab hold of God's word yes. and really just begin to, to just hold on, you know, hold on to him and not get so caught up in all of the other the noise that is going on even the noise of ourselves. So when I read that, I was like, it just really it puts things in perspective. Because tomorrow, obviously, obviously is not promised. So I just wanted that, I wanted to just say, because it really, I was like, wow. Um, you know, so we have to keep things in perspective. And, and you know, and God is not mad at us. Thank God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I'm just going to finish reading this. It says, for incomplete <coughs> And repeated committal, which is that dying to self. For incomplete and repeated committal lies the key to victories that can be thus more easily won, less painfully achieved, and more quickly gained, so that the valleys become less deep and less dark and more quickly pass through. Man is born, it is written, to trouble as the sparks fly upward. That's from Job 5, 5, 7, Job 5, 7. This is true as surely as rain falls and snow is cold. But it is equally true 
and gloriously so, that I have promised, and I will deliver you out of all of your troubles. So listen to this, and, this, and then we're, we're going to close up. So will you now take the first step in this experience of committal and give me your heart? Um, we have passed out um, these little pom-poms, these red pom-poms. I should have had mine out. I got it out now. And does everybody have a red pom-pom? Okay. Groovy. So will you now, I'm just going to read this and then we're going we're gonna to pray. So will you now take the first step in this experience of committal or that dying of self and give me your heart. Make it as tangible a transaction as possible. And visualize your own hand laying the physical organ of your heart in my hands. So let's do that now before I continue. Yes. We're going to do that. We're going to take, this is, this is just, it's by faith and it's a symbol of our heart. Yeah. You know, to the Lord. And so we're just going to take it by faith. Um, just holding this, you know, this is our heart. Pretend that this is just our heart. All the issues and everything else that comes out of it. And he says, oh, well, not he, but through uh, the word of God. God is saying through this. So will you now take the first step in this experience of committal and give me your heart? Make it as tangible a transaction as possible and visualize your own hand, laying the physical organ of your heart in my hands. Say to me, and let's do this together. Say to me, take this. Let's all say that. Take this, loving master and wonderful Lord, and do with it as pleases thee. He heals the broken in heart, a broken and, heart. and binds up their wounds. Binds binds up up their wounds. wounds. So we're just we're taking this and we're just gonna lay it, you know, we're just offering it up to the Lord. Like he needs, I mean, we really and I speak for myself. I'm not gonna say we, but I need to really just to give over. We need to just give our hearts over to the Lord, give those issues, give those isms and schisms. You know, that we have out of the issues. Well, I, what is it out of the heart? Well, the issues of life. Of life, and he's saying, just give us, give him your heart. Just Amen. give it all to him. Give it to him. So that's what we're doing. We're going to take this and I'm going to put this down now. And Father, I just thank you. We are giving you our heart as an act of faith, withholding this little red, fluffy pom pom or whatever, signifying, symbolizing our heart for you and the issues that we may have in it, Lord that we would just give our hearts wholeheartedly to you, that you would take away the stony parts, that you would soften up those areas that need to be softened for our spouses, for our brothers, for our sisters, for, for whomever, Lord, that we, for our neighbors, that you would soften up those hard places, Lord, that we, remind us that we can come boldly to your throne of grace, that you know that you really get us. You died for us because you got, you, you made that way for us. Thank you, you went through everything, all of those, those human emotions and experiences you went through on our behalf. It wasn't for you, it was for us. So Lord, we just as an act of faith, we give it all to you. We give our hearts to you, Lord. Hallelujah. And we ask that you would cleanse us, that you would do whatever you need to do to shake us and wake us, Lord, in this, in this season, in this time, that you would shake us and wake us to what you're doing. That we would hold our hearts up to you, Lord. Because only you're the one that's able to change the heart of man. And so we give our hearts to you to change and to do what you want to do with it. And we thank you, Lord, and we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah, praise. Thank you so much, um, our Facebook Live family. Thank you for tuning in. Tune in tomorrow at 7.55. And um, I will, we will see you again. God bless everyone.